you came to me and that I was of me when I was so lost, so lonely. You came to me, took my breath away, showed me the right way, the way to lead. You filled my heart with love, showed me the light above. Now all I want is to be with you. You are my one true love, taught me to never judge. Now all I want is to be with you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, to continue our discussion concerning the uh, Islamic philosophy course uh, this is the 11th session that we have started this program and uh, the topic of our discussion tonight is about justice of God if you remember we have uh, discussed about the um, um, existence of God <coughs> and then we have managed to cover the issue of unity of God and uh, then <coughs> we discussed the topics related to unity of God and uh, the existence of God um, today we are going to emphasize on one of very important characteristics of God, which is justice of God. I don't know why the pictures are not coming here. Uh, can you, I think the light is too much. Uh, it doesn't get here. I don't know what is my, however, there is a puzzle here, which you cannot see. I don't know. <laughs> because of some technological problems <coughs> that sometimes not always technology is working for you but sometimes against you and this is one of those occasions <coughs> here there was a puzzle that one piece was out so um, uh, the definition of justice is putting everything in its place just imagine a puzzle which one piece is out. So if you replace that one puzzle into the uh, respective place which is dedicated to that piece, that is called doing justice. Now if you irreplace it and you misplace those pieces, then that is injustice done to the picture. <clears throat> when we say God is just, the definition of justice is that Allah will put everything to its place. Adil, when we say Allah is Adil and he has got Adil, it means he is going to put everything to its place. <coughs> and that's exactly what he has done to the whole creation. Also here, the picture is not very, at the top there are a lot of shoes and down there is a lot of feet. Um, I want to emphasize about the discussion concerning the uh, the whole issue of equality and justice. There are two different uh, words. One is equality, the other one is justice. Sometimes equality can be justice, but not always. If you can see there is different sizes of people with different type of shoes. Equality says give them all one type of shoes with one size. Let them equally put shoes on. But justice says no. Some of them are men, some of them are women, some of them are children. So 
Some of them are size 34, some are size 32, some are 36, some are much less. So giving to each person the shoe which fits to their feet, that is justice. But equality is to give to everyone the same type of shoe. Justice is when you are going to a party, you must have that particular shoe. If you want to go to a maybe mountain climbing, then you need a different type of shoe. For treadmill and going to some sport activities, then you need a different type of shoes. Maybe for, um, you know, inside house, you may need another type of shoe. Justice is not that always you should have tackies. Justice is when you need tackies, put tackies. When you need uh, what you call a type of formal shoes, then you have formal shoes. But justice is when you have your own shoes with the size which fits to your feet. That is justice. But equality says, no, let us make a factory. In this factory, we just produce one size shoe, one color shoe, and let men, women, right, left, right leg, um, left leg, all of them should have that one type of shoe that I'm going to <clears throat> produce. So not always equality is justice. Sometimes, yes. In equal situation, in equal situation, justice can be equality. Two people are working for the same company. Both of them are, have got PhD. Both of them has got two children. Both of them has got uh, you know, e exactly from everything that you can think of, they are equal. So let them have equal salaries. But if one of them has got four children, the other one has got two. The one has got PhD, the other one has got an MS. The other one um, is hard working and stays much later for work. He loves his work. The other one is a very lazy person. He comes late, he leaves late. They cannot have equal salaries. Justice says give to everyone what that person preserve. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just because he has, first of all, created everything in balance. He has created everything in balance. What do you mean? For example, just imagine if the eyes were right at the top of your head, what was going to happen? If your nose, if your nose was right at the top of your head, then when the rain was coming, huh, what was going, you were going to be full of water. If the April, instead of being, being at the top of your eyes, were right down, what, what an ugly face you're going to have. Hmm? <clears throat> if your, sh your legs were not where it is, if one leg was more longer than the other one, you know sometimes we have, we haven't thought about so many of the mercies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has bestowed upon each and every one, but you never even thought about it. In your life, in your life, you never thought about it, but you need it every day. Let us have a little bit of a try. All of you have got button here. You see this button. Just open one of your buttons. Open it. Try, try to open one button. Everyone, let us let us do a commitment to an exercise. Just open one. I can see Mr. Dad Dashtian doesn't open. You are late today. I was, we were supposed to uh, listen to your good voice. However, now you opened it. Without using this finger, without using this finger, now using only this two, try to put it back on. Let me see if you can. Try it. I need a hero. Impossible. 
can you see you have used the sum finger from beginning of your life up to this moment you used it every day for writing you used it every day for lifting you used it every day for buttoning your all of the activities that you have you used it every single day but you never told about having such a great mercy bestowed upon you a lot of the mercies that every day we deal with it but we have no thought about it leave alone thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having those you know have you seen some albinos albinos you know those which are got very white faces the white ap apro the white eyelashes the white faces if you look at them all of them they were looking always like this why because the color of their eyelashes are not black the blackness of the color of your eyelashes are acting like a filter for the light to enter to your eyes with measurements and if it's not black it doesn't have that filter so instead of the uh, having a black eyelashes you need to now close your eyes more to filter the light to enter to your eyes with the measurement and because their eyelashes are not black then they have to close their eyes more you never thought about all you never thought about it and you never thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from beginning of your life up to now for having a black eyelashes for the blackness of your eyelashes just imagine small small issues but it can have a great impact in your life a great impact so God is just because he has put everything to its place everything in its place and created everything in balance just imagine if the distance between the Sun and the earth was more than what it is then it was going to be so cold that you all going to be freezed and if it was less than what it is then it was going to be a hell you're going to be all cooked alive You never taught Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the measurement, the proper measurement which is there. Allah put everything to its balance, created everything in balance. That is the meaning of justice of God. Then, <clears throat> introduce just laws also. God is just because he has introduced just laws. Everything which he has done and introduced is for a reason for a proper measurement for a proper philosophy and it has got its own rationals and it is necessary for your physical for your spiritual life laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced from prayer from fasting from zakat from homes from I don't know every single word that Allah has introduced in its holy Quran it's all necessary for everyone and for the society and for your physical and spiritual health and it is necessary for your society to have these laws none of them are without measurement everything for a reason God is just because justly divides responsibility for example if you are sick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to have fasting only when you are not sick and you are healthy then you have to have fast if you are healthy you have to fast if you are not healthy it's your duty not to fast so the same Allah who asks you to fast today if tomorrow you get sick the same Allah asking you not to fast <clears throat> so if you 
<coughs> fast when you are not supposed to, it is haram. And when you don't fast when you are supposed to fast, then it is going to be also haram. Allah is just because he introduced laws and divided responsibilities properly. If you have power <coughs> and you have knowledge, <coughs> then you are responsible. Not always. Only power and knowledge. If you know and you have ability to. For example, if you knew that today at 6 o'clock we are going to have our program here. Then I can ask you a question, why you didn't come? And if you are able also to come, you have transport. Then I was, I was able to ask you why you didn't come. But if you were sick, or you were in a hospital, or you were in a bad condition, or you were too far away from here, or you didn't know about it, then no one can talk to you about it, why you didn't come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also the same. He will only ask people about their responsibility if they know and if they have power to fulfill those responsibilities. God is just because he judge people with justice. <clears throat> he judge people with justice. It means <laughs> he will not do any oppression and فَمَنْ يَأْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَأْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ A little bit of a small particle of good thing will have its own reflection. It will have its own reaction and effect. And a small particle of bad action also will have its own effect on you. God is just because he will also punish with justice or reward with justice. He will not take you to hell if you are a good person. And he will not take you to hell if you have done the whole life good things. So, that is the meaning of the definition of justice. Now, why justice? Why we are highlighting justice? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got so many characteristics. He is Qadir, he is Alim, he is Muta'al, he is... Uh, great, he is Jabbar, he is Mutakabbir, he is Ghafoor, Rahim, Rahman, 99 beautiful names and beautiful characteristics. Only one of them is justice. Why we should highlight the issue of just justice? Because of two reasons. One is the historical debate and the other one is the political debate. <coughs> the historical debate which is a type of ideological debate also, there were, right at the beginning of Islam, a group of ulamas which they will call the Ash'aris or Ash'arites. The Ash'arites, they said, what God does is justice. When it comes to God, justice has no meaning. It means, if God, in the day of judgment, takes Imam Hussein to hell, Na'udhu Billah, and take Yazid to paradise. He is just. Justice is what he does. Don't ask him question. You cannot question God. He is almighty. He has got the power. We are his subject. And whatever he does, that is justice. <clears throat> so when it comes to him, justice has no meaning. He can take you to hell even if you are a good person. It's his power. That's what they believed. We actually believe that that is not the right thing. Beef with the opposition with the Ash'arite, there was Mu'tazilis and Mu'tazilites, which they believe no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is introduced, he has introduced the definition of justice and he is the first follower of his own definition of justice. Justice has got a definition and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follows the definition of justice. 
he will not take Imam Hussein alayhi salam to hell under any circumstances and he will not take Yazid to paradise under any circumstances he will follow the principle of justice that he himself introduced exactly like a proper cop the police that he introduced the law of red light and the green light he will not pass the red light when it comes to the traffic department Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also follow the definition of justice so that is the historical and ideological debates which we have to now highlight this issue and we must come and put justice into the right prospect for us to understand and not to be misguided the second is the political debate the political debate is also between the Umayyad dynasty and Abbasid dynasty which they actually were too much liked to believe and to let people in their time believe also that look everything in the world is by Allah's wish and Allah's will no one in the world has got no authority anything happen is decided by Allah if a leaf of a tree falls it was Allah's decision if I am the king they were supposed all of these things they are saying just to say this one sentence if I am the king it is none of your business it is Allah's decision so don't try to work against Allah in that system of thinking up to this moment in Arabic countries in Saudi Arabia continues just now you go to talk to normal Saudi people in the lay people in the streets of Riyadh tell you why you are not raising your voice against the government these people are corrupted he said listen kingdom it's coming from heaven and Allah is the one who puts the kingdom to whoever he likes Allah has given them the authority we are Mr. Nobody we can not do anything we have no power to fight against God that's what they say and they have managed actually in the time of Umayyah in the time of Abbasid later on with the Ottoman Empire all of the kings in the history all of them even in Christianity even the Christian kings in the time of Christianity when they were ruling they also liked the same idea to tell to the masses that you are Mr. Nobody you have no choice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just he gives the power to whoever he wants so don't try to fight against God you remember I remember the time of Shah there was a poster of Shah and there was a shadow next to the poster of the, the head of Shah and then on that shadow it was written Shah Sawye Khudast he is the shadow of God so it means look and then also you you know you always you remember that in the family of Riza Shahid all of them are Rizas, Rizas, Riza, Ali Riza, Muhammad Riza I don't know uh, all of them they were Rizas is because they try to show a type of bond with Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam they say listen we are you know appointed by Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam to be the king of a Shia country even there was a dream was going all around that Shah says one day I had this dream one night that uh, I was falling from my throne and Imam Reza came and hold my shirt and put me on the throne so we all decided to put our names Reza because we are uh, servant for Reza alayhi salam and in this way they were trying to tell to the masses that listen don't uprise don't think about the revolution because God is just he knows what he do and whatever he does is justice and today with the just God he has given us the kingdom so please don't start making noise because you cannot fight with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so historical debate between the Ash'aris and Mu'tazalis and also the political debate 
which uh, always has been in during the history that that is that is the reason that we have to highlight this to say no that is not the story god is just and he follows the definition of justice and we have to um, also follow that definition hope believing in justice what is the consequences of believing in justice uh, if we believe in justice and don't believe what is going to be, be the difference uh, if you believe in justice of God you won't do oppression because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just and he looks and he watch you are under microscope the cameras are taking picture from every single action of you from beginning of your life up to end and these recordings will be used against you just imagine you're going into a supermarket a thief enters to a supermarket now if there is a camera there the first thing the thief is going to check if there is any camera here or there if there is camera then Mr. Thief will say no, it's not possible to steal anything here because I am on camera and they are going to get my picture and I will be soon arrested. And only when he sees that there is no camera, then he start what stealing from that shopping center. The whole principle of taqwa is this story. That if you are in this big super car, supermarket called the world, if you, if you have the belief that there is a just God who looks at everything in this world and you are under camera and everything will be recorded, you are not going to do, you are not going to have any mistake. But only when you forget that Allah is watching you, then you are going to. Imam Khomeini has got this famous saying that the whole world is presence of Allah. In presence of Allah, you should not make mistake. There is a famous hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, if you want to commit sin, no problem, go ahead. But three things before, three things before. One, find a place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there. Fine. Find a place, go under the ground, maybe a hundred meter down the ground, maybe God is not there. Or go at the top, right behind atmosphere, maybe God is not there. May go to the moon, maybe God is not there. If you find a place which God is not there, then you can commit any sin you want. So, if you believe in just God, and you believe in his justice that he will apply it one day here or later then you are not going to mistake to do mistake and always you feel that you are on camera and then you are going to look after your action the second one is gives hope and then hardship becomes very easy you say okay Allah is watching Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the last minutes of his life he was asked that from beginning of this of day of today from this from ashura at the beginning up to now you lost so many of your friends your children but as much as you are losing more we can see you've got a brighter face you look more happy you have got a brighter figure what is the reason? He said, قَدْ حَوَّنَ عَلَيَّ أَنَّهُ بِعَيْنِ الله. Everything makes easy for me because I can see that Allah is watching. Allah is watching. And it's very important. Gives hope. That whatever they want to do is fine. Whoever talks against me, let, him, let them do. Whoever acts against me, let them do Allah is watching and in Allah yudafi'u anil ladina amanu and you must submit to the principle of justice if you believe in just God then 
if one day you do something wrong, if you do something wrong and you face the justice, it will be easy for you to accept that, listen, I've done this thing wrong and I am facing the punishment. That I've done something wrong, I told lies, so this is the punishment because you believe in justice. Justice is there. It's exactly like living in a country. Either it has, it's a lawless country, then it's fine. You can do anything, and then when you get punished, then you are not going to be what you call complain too much. But sometimes you know you are in a country which you know from A to Z. Here, if you do anything wrong, you are going to be punished. And if you one day you do get punishment, you are not going to complain too much. You say, no. From beginning I knew that if I steal, I will be in jail. If I do this, I will do that. If I avoid paying tax, you know, then I will be in jail. So, that is the consequences of believing in justice. Roots of the last discussion that I have in this uh, session is to prove why God is just. And for that, it's so easy. Why God should not be just? Why God should not be just? Because what is the roots of oppression? Why we do oppression? Why we or anyone who is doing oppression, why they do oppression? Because of either ignorance. They don't know what they do. They don't know that this is oppression. Or they don't know the consequences of what he's doing. Or he has got fear to lose power or lose money or lose position or lose reputation or lose anything else. Because of all of the fear that we have that if I do this, I may lose money. Or I may lose my family. Or I may lose my reputation, or this or that, because of those fear that we have, we are going to do oppression on the other people. We work against other people because of jealousy. Because I want to take that position and I have to remove the obstacles until I reach to the position that I need. Or because I need something, I need money, so I go and steal money from somebody. I need to become famous for becoming famous. I do anything which I need. When you need something, then you do oppression. Or because of bad nature. I am typically somebody which have got sadism. That I just uh, looking for harming other people. I've got a bad nature. I cannot do what you call good things. Or... I've got an inferiority complex that, you know, when I was in child, when I was a, you know, a child at that time, I was, be su I was suppressed and because of a lot of reasons today that I've grown up, I want to revenge from other people. Now, when it comes to God, when it comes to God, God possesses none of this. God is not an ignorant to do that he doesn't know what is going to be the consequences of his actions so he will not do oppression because of ignorance he will not do oppression because of fear who is there to make god be afraid of something impossible so he does he doesn't have no fear from anyone to be afraid of something and do oppression or he doesn't need anything he doesn't need money he doesn't you know, if the whole monies of the world be given to God, he's not going to be a wealthier God. Or he's not going to be a better God or a higher God or a more important God if the whole world worship him. So he doesn't need anything. He cannot be more famous than he is. He cannot be more wealthy than he is. He cannot be more um, powerful than what he is, not more knowledgeable than he is. So for him, need, the word need does not have no meaning. And he doesn't have a bad nature. 
he only he is good and from good only good come out he can not do something bad from god something bad can not be imagined even to to come out so allah is doesn't have a bad nature and he doesn't have also inferiority complex to prove something to you no one suppressed him in the childhood <laughs> Okay, that okay. Now that he's grown up, he's a better God. He's a bigger God. Now he's taught now slaughtering everyone. That is not the case. With him, inferiority complex does not have no meaning. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala possess none of these facts, which are the roots and reason for oppression. So God naturally is just, and justice is one of the um, qualities of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And with that quality. Um, uh, we are going to discuss more, inshallah, in the next session. We are going to have answer to about 10, 15 questions, which I want you to read more on this subject on internet. Just Google justice of God, and then a lot of questions you may have also. That, for example, if, just, if God is just, then why there is difference in society? Why there is rich people, and then we, there is... Um, poor people, why uh, some children are born with disabilities, why there is an uh, earthquake comes and all of a sudden 60,000 people in BAM lose their life, why uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not dealing with an oppressor like the king of Saud for example immediately, you know, where is God when he kills Sheikh Nemer, for example, where is God when Nigerian government or army kills 2,000 people in, um, in Nigeria? Oh, so many of other things. Where were God when for 300 years in South Africa, the whites had this domination and they killed so many people and did so many oppression? Where God was? Okay, when somebody rapes a woman, where is God? So many questions that inshallah in the next session I will answer and deal with them. All of them has got very, very logical answers that inshallah I will deal with them. Concerning the discussion today, if you have any question, please you are welcome. Salawat. My Ummah, my Ummah, he will say, Rasulullah on that day, even though We've strayed from him and his way My brothers, my sisters in Islam Let's struggle, work and pray